So the other day to avoid doing work, I was scrolling through Twitter as I probably do way too often. And as I was doing that, I came across this tweet by Prantham who made a CSS only typewriter uh, effect. And I thought it was really cool. So of course, instead of just looking at his code and getting back to work like I should do, I thought to myself, hey, it'd be fun to try and do that without looking at how he did it and seeing if I can pull it off. So in this video, we're gonna be diving into how I did it and how you could integrate it into your own projects. Hello my friend and friends and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to embrace the cascade and just fall madly deeply in love with CSS by having a lot of fun with it. Sometimes we go deep into the fundamentals and other times we learn a lot by building fun things like this instead. Now, one thing when I was creating this that I wanted to make sure of was that it would be as customizable as possible. My idea with it is I would make it work for me, but I also want to make it easy for you to integrate into your own projects so we can adjust the speed of it really, really easily with one custom property being updated. If you change the text that's inside of it, you can also update that really, really easily. Everything is just always going to be working. So you don't have to like fiddle around with it and try and fight with it or anything like that. You don't have to get JavaScript to start figuring out the widths of things or anything. It, you should be able to just throw it in there and get it to work. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I did have to check out Prantham's uh, a couple times, not so much for the code, but to make it look as good as his look to get like the, the timing of things down as we'll see. So a really big thank you to him for, for posting that tweet that inspired all of this. And I would definitely, I put his link to his uh, tweet Twitter down there because if you're not following him and you do enjoy CSS, he's just always dropping really awesome CSS stuff continually over on Twitter. So go give him a follow if you aren't already. Now let's go and dive into this video and see how I managed to get this done. All right, so we are here in VS Code and there are a few very important things or one very important thing to start with is whatever text you wanna be doing this on, it, ideally it should be kind of short, uh, but you will also need to have a, uh, right here, a mono space font on there. So I'm using Source Code Pro from Google Fonts. It must be a uh, it must be a monospace font because if the letters have different sizes to it, this whole thing just collapses very quickly. So that is one thing. Now, luckily, that goes really well with what we need. Uh, other than that, you don't need too much. You can see I just have an H1 here that says "Hello, my name is Kevin," and that's all we need for this type of thing to happen. So what we're going to do is. There, there's other approaches you can use for this for sure, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using uh, befores and afters to pull this off. And if you know me at all, you know I love my pseudo elements. Uh, if you're not comfortable with them, um, I would really strongly suggest that you do get comfortable with them. I do have a card popping up right there that goes into how pseudo elements work, just because it is a really big part of how I'm gonna be doing this. Um, so yeah, uh, just so you're not left a little bit confused by how it's happening, that could really help you out. If you wanna just keep on going, see if you can get it working and then check out that video later, it will be also linked down in the description below. Um, so with suit elements, you do need to have a content property on them. And so that's gonna help. And for now, I'm gonna give them a background, or we should give them different colored backgrounds. So I'll separate that out actually. And I just like doing that so we can actually see what we're working with. Um, I'm, I am gonna give them all, we might change a little bit of this, but for now we're gonna do a top, a right of zero, a bottom of zero and a left of zero. And of course, if you're doing all this, you should be putting a position on them. So we'll do a position absolute. Now I don't want this to be absolute for the whole page. I want it to be relative to my H1. Um, so we'll give this a position of relative to make sure that the H1 is the containing block right there. We're gonna, we'll just do with one of these for now. So one of them, we can't see them yet, but let's say my H1 before, we'll start with that one. And uh, we'll just give this a background, background of, let's go with teal, just so it's something we can see. It actually goes kind of nice with that color. So we can see it's come into place and now we'll be able to play with it while we'll see what we're doing and then we can make, uh, you know, change it afterward to be able to hide it away. And ideally what we want is we actually want it to start like this and then slowly disappear away so it's revealing the characters that are underneath it. And so to be able to do that, what I'm gonna do is come here and write key frames. I'm gonna write uh, type, Type, uh, typewriter, uh, or just straight typewriter, I guess that makes sense. Um, and we're just gonna say two. And so we want this to start here and then we want it to move all the way across. So we want this to go um, to the left of 100%. And that means the left is gonna move away, like 100% away um, from where it was. Now we shouldn't see anything yet, but what we'll do now is we'll come on here and this is, we just wanna make sure that this is doing what we want it to, animation. So we'll say uh, the animation we want is typewriter. We want it to say last, we'll just do one second for now and we'll do an ease just because why not? And there, so you can see as that time goes on, it reveals the text that's underneath it. That's a start, but obviously it doesn't look great right now. So one of them is it's probably a little bit too fast. 
Um, we don't really want it to be using an ease because we don't want to reveal it like that. And the easiest thing to fix here is if we write forwards at the end, it means once the animation runs, it won't cover it again. It doesn't go back to the starting position. It stays at the end, like this last part here. Um, you, you will notice I didn't put a starting point. I've only put an ending point on this. If the starting point is the same as whatever your initial property would be anyway, so like you've declared something here, you don't have to declare that um, in the the animation itself. I learned that from Jay. So if you don't know Jay, I'll put a link to his Twitter um, in the description. He's a CSS genius that does all sorts of crazy, crazy, crazy stuff <laughs> with CSS. So recommend you check him out. The Okay, so if, let's just watch that again. We'll refresh and we can see it's revealing it that way. Now what we want to do is instead of doing it, uh, we can use one second actually, let's just make it a little bit longer because I think one second is going to be kind of fast. So we can slow it down. Um, and instead of using an ease here, and just to make it a bit easier, I'm going to put this on, an, on its own line just so we can see the different things we're doing. Um, actually, Prettier might fix this, but that's okay. Um, what we want to write here is actually write steps. And then how many steps do we want it to take? Now, this is the one thing where JavaScript maybe could do something that I can't do here with CSS, and let's know how many characters I have in the text here. So we just have to count them. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 22, 23, 24, including the period and including all the spaces. So my steps is going to be 24. Let's hit save and let's watch what happens now. Ooh. Ooh, that's kind of cool. That's just cool on its own, right? So basically what we're saying is I want my typewriter animation. So we're moving it from a left of zero to a left of 100%. And just in case you're wondering, I'm always saying not to do animations using um, positioning, like the top left, right. I'm usually saying to use things like transforms or scales and stuff like that. Because we don't need a buttery smooth 60 frames per second animation for this, it's going in steps. I, doesn't really matter. And I think this is the easiest way to do it. So that's why I'm doing it like this. Um, so we get 24 steps. And again, this really depends on the, the the text that you have, how long your name is and all of that. But we can see that it is revealing everything right there. And you can see it's doing one letter at a time. And actually, I just, I just thought of something that it is possible. This is sort of happening a little bit because I have a grid set up on my body and my H1 is part of that. Uh, I'll show you a thing. We see right now I've broke it now. Um, so if you're not set up in this exact situation, you might run into this where you get this problem where the default is like, even though my H1 has a width, uh, or only has 24 characters in it, the, it's a block level element. The width is wanting to stretch. And what happened here is, um, I put it in a grid just to center it on the screen, but that had the consequence of it actually shrinking the size of it. Uh, but what you can do to actually get that behavior by default is if you go on your H1, let's just give this an outline so we can see it. Outline, two pixels, solid red. Um, so now you can see that the, it has that full width to it. What you can do is you can give this a width of max content and hit save. And now it's going to shrink to fit the content that's inside of it without breaking that content. Uh, so let's open up responsive mode here. And uh, you can see that like I've set this up with a clamp on my font size. So the font's changing a little bit. If you don't know about this, uh, which is absolutely the best, there's a card popping up where I dive into how clamp works um, for big fonts and for little and for things like this. I think it's absolutely wonderful. So the font will shrink down. It does hit a minimum size though, and you will get like some overflow that can happen from it. Uh, that's why I said shorter text will work better on this and maybe a media query that turns it off like you don't have this type of animation on small screens if you can't prevent line breaks or something like that. Um, it might be worth it. So let's go and turn this back on uh, just so we can keep it in the center of my screen. So just sorry about that little tangent, but I think it's an important one. And the, the big advantage with that is actually you don't have to worry about the width of your element. It's this is automatic. This is going to work no matter how long or short it is. You don't have to guess how many pixels or whatever it is. You don't have to, you know, we have characters now. so. Um, you could use the character units, I guess, but um, yeah, that's working right there. So let's turn off that outline. And so we have this that's revealing everything and it's doing it that pace. So now where the real magic can happen is we want this to have the same color background as my whatever background color it's on. So I have come in with a custom property here and we're going to use custom properties a bit to make this a bit more customizable. Uh, but we'll do this one custom property right here. Let's stick it on there. And now it looks like it's being typed out because the color that's covering it is the same color as the background. So it looks like it's coming out. Awesome. I'm, I'm super happy with that already. I think that already looks pretty cool. So next thing we want to do is get the little carrot thing that's going to be blinking away. So for that, we'll use our after. So h1 after. 
And for this one, it's gonna be a little bit different, obviously, um, but we can we can keep all of this on here, I think. Um, so let's let's come on my H1 after here. Let's just give it a width. I'm gonna do a uh, 0.125M, and I'm using M because I use clamp, my font size could change. So that means that if the width of this, if the font's changing, I want the width of the carrot to grow and shrink with that font size. So by using M there, it's gonna match the font size of my H1. So uh, it can adapt to that. And we'll give it a background of black because I think that makes sense. And there we go, we have a carrot, it's in place. Uh, it's just not doing anything too fancy yet. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do on this is we're gonna use the same animation that we already did. So let's just paste that on there. And let's hit save. And now you can see that it's it's working. And this is kind of interesting. And you might be going, well, wait, Kevin, how's it working? Um, and basically it's following the same, the exact same thing. And but just because the left side of it is being pushed along, even though we've set a width on it, um, it has the, the width, but it also has that left. So the left positioning is being pushed along at the same pace that the other one is because they both have the same speed and all of that on it. So I think that's kind of cool. So you can see it looks like it's sort of following as it's being typed out. Now, there is one thing here is if you wanted to adjust the speed now, it's kind of annoying it's in two places. So this is, I would come up here and we could come and say that we have my type writer speed, speed. And let's say, and it looks a little, I'm gonna put six seconds. We're gonna slow things down a little bit. Um, so that just means here, I could use this custom property of var, um, let's turn word wrap on for a sec, var type, type writer speed. And of course we want that to be in both places. So this four seconds could also get replaced by that. And now it gets typed out right there as well. And it's looking pretty good. So yeah, that's a good start, but obviously we just have a black line that's moving. It looks a lot more realistic if it's blinking. So we will have to come up with another animation here. So let's come at keyframes. We'll just call it blink. And for this one, what we'll do is we're gonna say a two, and I'm just gonna switch, we're gonna say background is transparent. And so that means it's gonna go from the black color that it was to a transparent color, which will cause it to blink. So if you didn't know this, you can put multiple um, animations on something. So here we have my typewriter animation. Let's turn word wrap off just so we can see it's um, on one line. So we have typewriter. I'll just make this bigger so we can see it a little easier. Um, so we have my typewriter with that animation. And then I'm gonna put a comma and we'll put a second one. So the second one is blink. And we're gonna do, um, I'll, I'll put the same speed on it for now. We'll have to change this one though. Type writer speed. We want the same steps, so steps 24. And then we'll stick with four, uh, let's just put forwards and then we'll adjust it as we need to uh, from here. Now it's not gonna work perfectly as it is right now, but let's hit save on that and see what it looks like. Uh, and of course I've just broke the entire thing. Oh, you know why, why? because I didn't put an S here on forwards. There we go. So now it is working, but you can see that, see how it's fading out, fading out, fading out, fading out, and then it gets to the transparency of zero. Uh, so we don't want that. So that's where I said the speed needs to be adjusted. So this is this is how fast you want it to blink, basically. Uh, so let's try like 500 milliseconds and we can just adapt it from there. Uh, of course, now actually, now it's disappeared. Here, let's just put, um, instead of forwards, I'm gonna write infinite, which means it can keep going over and over again instead of stopping at the end. So there we go, it's blinking away. And actually maybe I would make that a little bit faster. 350, uh, 350. That looks terrible. Uh, maybe 500 is okay actually. We'll go back up to 500, but uh, just cause I'm looking at it here and it's going really, really fast. But I think what would really help this is before things start that we have like it's blinking over here before the typing starts. Um, so what I would actually do is on the typewriter one itself, I'm gonna come after the steps and I'm gonna put one second here. And if I do that here, this is a delay. So I'm also gonna have to put that one here. We'll hit save. So see how it's blinking already? And then it starts typing it out. Now I definitely got that one from Pratham's tweet. Um, I was looking at why his looked better than mine and uh, it, it just that delay at the beginning made such a big difference. So I think that's a really nice start uh, and a really nice way just to add that sort of sense of realism before it starts typing out. So like, let's look at that again, uh, save, come on, refresh. There we go. So yeah, just that delay before the typing starts, I think is a really nice sense. It adds a really nice sense of realism to the whole thing. 
and even you know the speed here maybe even as I, I was saying before ah, i like that better there we go i found the speed that i like now 750 is what i'm going with you can obviously adjust this and this is somewhere where you could come up and set up a whole bunch of custom properties that are what are controlling this entire thing so that is one of the beauties of it and even you could put all like i'm putting these on my root you could put all these custom properties on the um within the h1 as well and just control the entire thing here you could come in and put the delay you could even have like uh, we have typewriter speed we could also do a type typewriter calc um typewriter characters characters so in my case i have 24 characters but if the text were ever to change we could just update this custom property so that way your steps here we could should be able to come in and say var uh type writer characters and it should still work uh so here this should be characters not speed there we go so that's still working so you could come in and that way if you have a different your text changes you just come in and update that one place and you're updating all of these at the same time so that's definitely a really really handy um, a way to make it a lot more customizable. You could even use JavaScript then to update the custom property if you wanted to. Um, that could be one way that you could approach it as well. And I guess we'd want that to be right here as well because anywhere that was using the steps, if we're using the custom property, makes it easier to adjust. Now, the one thing that's really busted with it for me right now is like this comes in, um, like the, this text down at the bottom here is driving me nuts. And like, we shouldn't see welcome to my website, then it types in. It should be the other way around, right? We should see it type in and then that comes in. So we're gonna do that really nice and fast. I have my subtitle that is here right there. And we're just gonna come in and create a new keyframes for that. Let's just move all of these down, I guess. So we can keep all of our keyframes uh, in one spot. And what we'll do is we'll come in with another one. We'll do key, keyframes, and we'll say fade in up, like that. And so this one's gonna be nice and easy. We're gonna go uh, to a opacity of one. And a transform translate y because y is up and down of zero, and because we want it to end where like at its finishing spot, and that just means that on my subtitle we can come in with an opacity of zero, and then we can come in with a transform translate y, and we'll just move it down like I don't know three rem or something like that. Is that up or down? We'll find out in a second, <laughs> and then we'll come in with our animation. So my animation is going to be my uh, fade in up. We'll say it's over 500 milliseconds and we'll just throw an ease on there. So there it is, that's way too fast. So let's do that at like two seconds and we'll do a forwards with an S on there and you can see it fades in and up. So ha, it was down when I did that one. So that's perfect, it looks great. Except now we need it to be delayed until the typing is finished. So for that one, once again, we can come in with a custom property uh, because remember this number, if I put it, if I don't put a number here, there's no delay, but we saw before we can add delays to our animations. So here I want to do a delay that is the length that this is gonna take to be typed out plus probably a little bit more. So let's just start by doing, um, now remember we did our typewriter speed was a custom property that we came up with. So we can make the delay be our var uh, typewriter speed right there. So let's hit save and we'll watch. And so as soon as this finishes, it should fade up and in. There we go. Oh, it was off by a little bit. Oh, because we had a delay. Remember we had a delay at the beginning of it. So uh, we need to make it plus one second to make that actually be exact. But I actually want it to be a little bit longer anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this whole thing, or actually let's just start here where I have my variable. Um, and we're gonna do a calc. And I'm gonna put it on its own line and we'll say calc. We'll select all of this. And so we have var calc of that speed. So then what I'm gonna do plus, we'll say two seconds and hit save. And so now if this works, it should do the whole thing and about a second afterward, it should come in. Uh, there we go. And if you like this video, you'd probably really like this video right here where I built a neon button with a really cool glow that came underneath. That glow just makes me smile every time I put it on, it blurs out like that. Uh, if not, I put another custom playlist together here as well for you to check out. A really big thank you to Prantham for the inspiration for this, as well as my enablers of awesome Zach and Randy, as well as all my other patrons. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome. Why did I just wear my earphones with no audio on for this entire video? I don't know, but I did.